Well, the most obvious is death. I mean, we do see a handful of teenagers in Nevada pass away from asthma, and and that's real difficult because asthma is something that can be controlled. And so you don't hear about a lot of deaths, but up to f over 4,500 deaths across the USA, across the board from infants all the way to elderly. But you, we do see it and it really hits home when you do see teenagers come in dying from asthma. I often get called um, by the donor network um, in order to uh, check the lungs after someone passes away from asthma in order to see if the lungs themselves are suitable to be donated. So that's the most obvious complication. Then there's admissions, hospital admissions. Well, it, if someone is admitted, they don't realize that in pediatrics, the parents have to take off work, which is lost productivity for the company, lost income for the parents, possibly affecting even their job if they have to miss so many days. Then the child misses school. There's all these secondary f losses from asthma itself. And then looking at the bigger picture in, in the child himself, if you don't treat inflammation, if you keep, like, keep rubbing, it'll get red, and after a while it'll start oozing, eventually get a scab and then a scar. So same thing happens within the lungs. If you keep ongoing inflammation and leave it untreated, that could lead to scar tissue and permanent changes over time. Like a typical untreated asthmatic will have less than 30 to 40% of the lung capacity when they're in their 50s and 60s when they hit retirement age.